What is up, everyone? Welcome to round four of the Portland Monthly Pre-Modern Paper Magic Afternoons, April 2024 edition. We've brought back the Battle of Wits deck because honestly, it's super cool and had to get on camera at least once more. So without further ado, let's see who he's playing against. Well, of course, Caustic is not going to disappoint here, bringing another spicy brew. This is a Gix combo deck that I'm going to do my best to describe. Essentially, this uses Priest of Gix, Jet Medallion, and Reoccurring Nightmare along with one other Priest of Gix to generate infinite mana taking advantage of priest of gix ability to make three mana on etb and jet medallion making all of those black cards one less the idea here being that you can eventually draw through your entire deck with phyrexian rager assuming you you know don't ping yourself to death rip your opponent's hands apart with mesmeric fiend kill all your opponent's creatures with festering goblin make an infinitely large carrion feeder or just drain them with highway robber there's a few different ways for this deck to win and all of them look pretty freaking sweet can't wait to see how this deck performs but i've teased it long enough let's talk about the battle wits deck for those of you that didn't catch round one of this month and you should definitely go check it out this is a paper battle of wits deck and if you're not familiar with the card battle of wits it is a four drop enchantment that at the beginning of your upkeep as long as you control 200 more cards in your library you win the game so naturally you got to start with more than 200 cards in your deck this is a 250 maybe 251 not entirely sure card deck that my buddy tony put together and it is nuts we worked on this a little bit it is mostly esper with a slight splash of red and essentially devolves into just esper good stuff but is also running a ton of tutors including all the enchantment tutors like enlightened tutor but also just you know some good black tutors i'm not gonna go through every card in this list because i am actually gonna post the deck list in the video description this is one of the few times where i do have access to that i know a lot of people ask in videos and most of the time it's not possible but this time it is all in all a beast to play kudos to tony for attempting it and yeah without further ado let's dive into the games all right we have caustic on the left tony on the right and get a little roll off here and it looks like caustic's gonna take that down going first just in case you couldn't tell which one was the battle with deck it's the one that's looking like it's gonna topple over <laughs> Let's hope it doesn't. Okay, both players looking at their starting seven. It is very unlikely that Tony is going to start with a Battle of Wits. So he's just looking for enough draw spells or tutors or something to help him get there. And it looks like he did. Alright, both players keeping a seven. Caustic is just going to play a Swamp and pass. Tony going to play a City of Brass and pass. Now, neither of these decks are particularly aggressive. Ooh, all right. Also, getting his Jet Medallion. Not a card you see super often. Also, just got reprinted in, uh, in MH3. Unfortunately, not in a cool old border. The, uh, the full art one looks pretty sweet, though. All right, Tony playing on a mountain. Going to take a point from the city. And I think we're going to get a little hand attack here. Duress, you. Okay, and I don't think... Oh, no, he is going to hit one of the recurring Nightmares. Also being very lucky and having that back up in hand. But also almost has the combo assembled here. Does still need a creature in the graveyard. Does still need the Priest. All right, we are gonna play out just a highway robber, shoot you for two, gain two. And pass. All right, Tony finding another land, which I think was important. That mountain is one of only a very few in the deck because his red splash is very minor. I wouldn't even necessarily have <laughs> a mountain in the deck for that light of a splash, but in a 250 card deck, you do have to make allowances, right? So, unfortunate that he saw it this early, but did draw a blue-black source, which will help filter that mountain into a better color pair. He does have Limdol's Vault in hand. 
Also has a mind stone. Could ramp a little bit more. Okay, we're gonna filter the mountain. Make blue black. And we're gonna Limdul's Vault. Now this card is pretty wordy, <laughs> but basically it boils down to look at the top five cards. If you like them, reorder them however you want. Otherwise, pay a life, put them on the bottom, look at the next top five. And repeat that for as many times as you want. So this is a good way to dig for a battle. And in fact, if he dives deep enough, could potentially win him the game here. He does have to get a land in that top five as well, though. And it looks like he is going to be keeping this one. So maybe getting lucky right off the bat. Not taking any damage. <laughs> and Kaza going to give that a paragraph a read. That's one of those cards where it almost has Yu-Gi-Oh levels of text. Um, <laughs> but should be fine. Looks like he's got a portent up too. So should be able to draw some at Cossack's end step. Okay, I'm just going to swing for two. Drop down to five. Caustic, I think, thinking through here, maybe expecting a Battle of Wits to come down soon. It's going to tap out three for a Gravedigger, which will do nothing. That's just going to pass. All right, I'm going to take one. Ooh, force a discard. Well, that does turn on the reoccurring nightmare. Gonna pitch a grave digger. And Tony's gonna pass. Or Caustic's gonna pass, sorry. Okay, so Tony did find a land. And tap four. Does he have Battle Wits in hand? Already? Did I not see that? No, okay. He's got a way to go find Battle Wits if it dies. So basically shutting off any attacks right now, but it may not matter. Kind of depends if Cossack found a Gix, a Priest of Gix. If he did, he's got the combo. I think. <laughs> Maybe not. I think he, he would need one more turn because you play out the Priest, makes three mana, you're able to play out the recurring nightmare, sack the highway robber. Oh, he does have it. Okay, so make three mana. Spend two of it. Cast out the recurring nightmare. I think you sack the highway robber here. The problem being, he needs the highway robber in the graveyard for this to work cleanly. I don't think he has a way to do that necessarily. He would need one more swamp, I think, for this to function the way he wants it to. Maybe more than that. I'm actually not sure if... I don't think this deck plays Dark Rituals. Maybe I missed it in the, uh, the deck tech, because it is definitely creature heavy, but... Dark Ritual might allow this combo to happen faster. He would definitely let it happen here. I think he's just missing enough mana to sack both the Grave Robber, or the Highway Robber, sorry. Of 
Great Trigger does trigger. He's going to say, no, I don't want to do that. All right, two mana. Oh, no, he actually might be able to do this. Well, at least train for one. Next turn. Next turn, he has the combo. Okay, goes back to hand. Shoot you for two, gain two. All right, next turn, you're in trouble. And pass. And did Tony stack it so he draws Battle of Wits? If he did, it's not unfortunately going to matter. No, he drew an Intuition. Okay. Not exactly the same thing. But Caustic does have the infinite Drain Gain combo in his next turn. So Tony needs to either disrupt it somehow. Mindstone's not going to do it. And I think this round one, or sorry, this game one, is all wrapped up. We do get to see the combo, though, from the uh, Caustic side, so that is pretty sweet. All right, play out the Nightmare. Nightmare, sack in the High Robber, get the Gix. Make three mana. Spend two of it. Cast the Recurring Nightmare. Sack the priest. Get the highway robber. Okay, so it's not infinite, actually. Sorry. <laughs> uh, he would need one more jet, I think, for it to be infinite. But he can at least hit him for a bit. I think right now he's missing one mana in each loop. Alright, Recurring Nightmare. Might as well drain for as much as you can. Force it to happen. Make three mana. Spend two of it. Play it out. Same thing again. Yeah, so right now he's down one mana. So you do need two jets. Or potentially if you had um, a Priest of in the graveyard and one on the field, you could flash it back and make infinite mana that way and then do the Highway Robber. But this is going to end on this loop. However, he can now just swing in with the two Grave Diggers for a lethal. I believe. But Tony has one blocker and he's at one, right? Grand, if he has a way to stop one of those attackers and is able to block with the Academy Rector, he wins next turn. So it is a risk. <laughs> yeah. But I think if you're at this point, you just go for it. And I think the correct play here actually would have been to attack with all three creatures first and then do this loop. Because you could have done it with whichever one uh, survived. Well, there'd be two that survived, but it'd be lethal damage no matter what. Obviously, it's easy to see the correct play commentating on a game that's already happened. <laughs> Grand, I am coming into this game uh, totally blind. Whenever I hit these videos, I literally just find the start and the end point of each uh, game and then cut around it, and that happens weeks before I even actually do commentary, so I very rarely remember what actually was the last play of each game. But still commentators uh, benefit, I guess. <laughs> we do get a, a peek at what's in both players' hand, which is very relevant. Because, yes, there are definitely answers that are two mana that Tony could have that would guarantee him the win. I think 
Oh no, Caustic's just gonna pass, leaving the win on the table. Oh, but Tony did have it. <laughs> Is able to kill his own Academy Rector. Go get Battle Wits. He had it no matter what. Was digging for it frantically. This is going to be the first time on camera we've caught a Battle of Wits winning through the trigger. Wow, there's got to be one in there somewhere. <laughs> nope, that's not it. There we go. There's one. All right, Battle of Wits. Pass to my turn. And I think that's game. <laughs> We're doing a little bit of shuffling here, but for all intents and purposes, I'm pretty sure Kozik does not have a way to deal with that, and we're going to pack it up and go to game number two. Well, you love to see it. Both players getting to do mostly what their decks want to do. Kozik coming up just a little bit short, but almost had it. And Tony finally getting that Battle Wits win on camera, so... Very fun to see. Can't wait to see how this game two pans out. Looks like Tony might be missing lands, or at least enough lands. I think he's got one. So I might be looking to ship this back. Yes, all right. Now we get to experience the fun part of a 250 card deck, the shuffling. <laughs> you guys have seen it a little bit before, but Looks like we're going to get Caustic to help out a little with the shuffle. Uh, yeah, this deck maybe sees more play on Magic Online for a reason. <laughs> I don't think it's a tier 1 deck by, by any means, but it's definitely a little more manageable digitally. Um, so again, props to, to Tony for bringing this to play. It definitely takes a, uh, a strength of will and uh, dexterity to play this for six rounds <laughs> uh, but yeah looks like Kossi has a keepable seven Tony's got lands and spells so he's probably gonna keep I don't see a battle wits in hand he does have a propaganda though which could be oh he's actually gonna be putting that one back which kind of makes sense uh, seeing what Kossi was running with uh, more of the uh, the gain drain stuff. Maybe propaganda won't be as relevant, but Cossack's deck is mostly creature based, so propaganda could be very backbreaking. It looks like he's going to try and name Battle Wits. <laughs> Definitely a crapshoot with this many cards in Tony's deck, but at least get some hand knowledge and we get a clearer picture as well. Looks like he's got Thawing Glaciers, Listen Meyer, um, Platinum's Legacy, Counterspell, uh, Psychotog, and um, some charm. I forget what it is. It's the Esper charm. Diaga's charm or something? I don't know. I probably butchered that. But a pretty good assortment of lands and spells. Opting to play out the Bond Glaciers first. Bond Glaciers was an absolute house back in the time before its rules change. You used to be able to activate it twice, basically getting a two for one every time. Unfortunately, those rules have been changed, so it is less good, but when you're in a deck with 250 cards, you need every bit of mana fixing you can get, even if it is very slow. All right, so Caustic's gonna play out a Festering Goblin, I think, and a Carrion Feeder. Pretty good combo. Mostly just committing creatures to the board. Got to get that pressure in quick. Tony gonna play out his Bloodstained Meyer, opting for the land that was revealed. Gonna take one, and are you gonna double fetch here? Might as well, right? You didn't play the Bind Glaciers not to use it. All right, so yeah, we are gonna double fetch. Most likely getting a swamp and an island. I think Tony just explaining that as well. 
So that card will go back to his hand at the end of the turn. He might shortcut to now, because it's not super relevant. All right, get him a swamp. Using that swamp to go get an island, right? Yes. All right. Island hits the field. Which is tapped. <laughs> yes, Thawing Glacier is, does fetch lands, but they do enter tapped. All right. I need to shuffle up and pass the turn. Ooh, do we have a Jet Medallion? All right, plan out a Swamp first. And yes, we do have the Jet Medallion. Playing around a potential uh, days, I guess. Days could be very relevant. Cosmic correctly catching that before he casts the spell. And then he's going to play out a Mesmeric Fiend. And we get to see a cool little rules interaction, little combo wombo. So just like how Disenchant effects work with Parallax Wave and Parallax Tide, uh, Mesmeric Fiend has the same thing. If you're able to kill it, before its first ability resolves, that card that it takes from your opponent's hand is exiled forever, uh, which is pretty neat. And because Caustic has a carrion feeder on play, he does have a free sack outlet. And if by chance he gets a Gix, another jet medallion, and a recurring nightmare, he can strip every single card from Tony's hand. Actually, I'm not sure if it's every single card. I think it's all non-lands. Um, pretty sure. It looks like it might be correct there because Tony's taken apart the or away the two lands that can't be grabbed. I think yeah, counterspell is the correct call here. Um, Meddling Mage. There's definitely a case for that as well. In fact, I might try and take that one first. Because um, Meddling Mage can definitely name Reoccurring Nightmare or Priest of Kicks, uh, both, both of which Tony did see in game number one. And I'm not sure if uh, Caustic has a good way to deal with it. I mean, yes, eventually he can start recurring the, the Festering Goblin um, to kill Meddling Mage, but not if he names Reoccurring Nightmare. He would need to get a second one, I guess, would be the, the play. And then sack them both to the carrion feeder. So Tony has a decision here. Only has tap lands as far as we know. And is not actually able to cast anything, so is gonna pass. Here we go. So his mana working against him a little bit. Especially with Caustic already having a clock. You need to find something quick. There are board wipes in Tony's deck. Uh, there are four Wrath of Gods. I think there might be one or two other ones, but those are the big ones. Grad, that's four cards and 250 cards, so you know, chances of seeing him when you need him are pretty slim, but still could find him. And a quick look at the charm. I'm gonna be honest, I don't fully remember what that card does, so viewers watching, if you want to comment below, feel free. It is the, the Esper charm from Plane Chase, though, to help you narrow it down. I think it draws cards, can potentially counter a spell, or give creatures negative something. Um, all of which could be relevant. Tony will be able to cast it next turn, I believe. All right, so just swinging in for three to start. Tony does have mana leak mana up. Oh, interesting. All right, trying to decide if we go for a Cabal Therapy here. Looks like gonna play out a recurrent nightmare. Oh, okay. So Cabal Therapy, the Festering Goblin. Yes. Okay. 
Some discussion happening here. I wonder if he's trying to put another counter on the oh, carrion feeder. But that's not possible. <laughs> nope, instead we're just gonna go all therapy for the psychotog. Yeah, Tony pointed out that the carrion feeder has to be the one to sacrifice the creature, not the cabal therapy. Oh, I think they're saying that um, the festering goblin has to target something. And the carrion feeder is uh, a 2 2, so it doesn't die to the negative 1. Maybe that's what was going on there. Alright. Tony drawing for turn. Found a polluted delta. Is able to hold up the charm now, but might be wanting to just commit something to the board. Can't really name... Well, you still could name Recurring Nightmare. He'd only get one trigger off of it, so it's not the best. Um... I think Tony's shortcutting here a little bit, <laughs> trying to tap that fetch land for mana, but maybe just saying I'll go get this in a second. So probably getting an island. Need those two blue to cast Battle Wits. That is very important to have. There we go. Then. Playing out the meddling mage, I'm assuming. Right? Tap for a white. Oh, no, are we sacking it for. Okay. Meddling mage. He's gonna name Reoccurring Nightmare. Alright, so no longer cast it. Then with the one other floating. What's going on here? <laughs> oh, sorry, yes. Uh, he's gonna put one card back. I forgot how Latinum's legacy works. You put one card back, uh, shuffled into your deck, I believe, and then you can draw two. That's the next upkeep. So it's functionally not really a draw spell, because <laughs> you're just losing one, shuffling one in to draw two. I guess it kind of is. Um, but it is a good way to put back cards that you don't need, especially if you're getting mana flooded um, or something like that. So, Caustic helping us out, writing down what Milling Mage is naming, which is the Reoccurring Nightmare. And moving to Caustic's upkeep, waiting for Tony to finish shuffling so he can draw. Mashing together that deck. <laughs> uh, that will never not get old. All right, drawn two on your upkeep. And we're not getting a really good look at them either. Ooh, did that? Was that a battle woods? We're not gonna say that for every blue card. Is that Battlewits? <laughs> I don't think it was. I think it was um, maybe an intuition, or not intuition, a... Uh... Oh, what is that? Hmm. I don't think it's Battlewits, so. He does have his fourth land. All right, Cabal Therapy, naming the charm, and then you still have to show your hand. Is that Opt? I think that might be Opt. I'm actually not really sure what, what that card is. <laughs> uh, two lands and a spell. It might be Peak, actually. I think it's Peak. Look at targets upon his hand, draw a card. Alright, gonna swing for two. 
Do you want to block with your meddling mage? Nope. Alright. Yep. That is peak. Alright. You gotta land. <laughs> Draw a card. Probably just gonna play out the tap land here. No? Opt in for the flooded strand. Potentially having some action in hand. Gonna fetch. Go down one. His dice are a little off camera. I don't think he's just at nine, I think. He's got a little more life than that. Ooh, and taking the offensive, swinging in. Bold move. The Battle of Wits deck is definitely not an aggro deck, definitely not a creature deck. Um, but I guess getting that chip damage in where you can, even though damage ultimately doesn't matter for this deck's win con. He must have potentially uh, another Psychotog or some other creature in hand and it's opting that maybe the beatdown plan would be good. Uh, Caustic finding a answer though with his Mishra's Factory. Can't quite properly block, but I think at this point even a, uh, a chump block or a trade um, would still be to Caustic's benefit. Not being able to cast the Recurring Nightmare again is very huge, so he's going to have to pick his timing on when he actually does use that. And right now, I don't think he has anything in his graveyard that's worth going after until he knows for sure that Tony is tutored for a Battle of Wits. Uh, Alright, while we're shuffling, we're going to go to Caustic's turn. Swing for two. And pass. Oh, sorry, go to Caustic's. Uh, combat step. And like I said, this deck that Tony's playing requires a lot of dexterity. Uh, constantly shuffling. So many fetches. So many tutors. Can't imagine your hands are happy with you by the end of, uh, end of the day for sure. So, Again, very happy to see it and big thanks for him for uh, Suffering through. We're on round four. He's been doing this for four <laughs> rounds so far. <laughs> All right, we got another island. And swing in for two. Cossack opting not to block with the factory, which is very interesting. I would have traded there personally, but that is a lot of open mana. All right, we got a Ravenous Rats. And let's counter that I believe yep functionally the same thing I guess you could have discarded a, a land or something and held up a counter spell for something else but if you may want to make sure that you don't have fodder for the reoccurring nightmare that makes sense Ooh, and he actually is down that low in life. Yes, uh, this is this has been very dangerous swinging in with the the meddling mage. I mean, yes, you don't want to block the carrying feeder just to open up reoccurring nightmare again, but yeah, that is that is uh, that is risky. <laughs> Let's see if it pays off, Cotton. All he needs to do is top deck battle wits again, and he's won. Okay, so here we go. Karen Feeder. Or, uh, Festering Goblin, sorry. Interesting that he didn't go for the Mesmeric Fiend yet. Maybe worried that Tony is just flooded, which is very possible. Although it looks like he might have just pulled a Merchant Scroll. Not so secretly looking through his sideboard, seeing if he has an answer there. Being on three is definitely not where you want to be. 
Okay, I'm gonna play out a tap land. Tap three. Cunning wish. Okay. I guess the merchant scroll is for uh, within your deck. Cunning wishes outside your deck. <laughs> because it's a wish. To be honest, it's been a minute since I've looked at the Battle of Wits deck. I am working on my own version as well, also. Uh, just true Esper, no, no splashes for any colors. But. If I was to bring it to an event, it would probably just be uh, an FNM or something fun. <laughs> no, looks like Tony's actually just going to scoop it up there. That's going to be game number two. That was an interesting concession. I'm not really sure what the reasoning was there. Tony did have to block the Carrion Feeder no matter what, as if he tried to block the Festering Goblin, we would just get sacked to the Carrion Feeder and lethal damage would get through. But he had one more turn, so I'm not sure why that happened. I would be interested to know the reasoning behind it, and if uh, people in chat watching the video, whatever, have a better understanding of it than me, then absolutely uh, let me know. But I think Tony had at least a turn there. All right, so Caustic playing out a Festering Goblin and go. Good turn one start. Not as good as the, uh, the Carrion Feeder from game one, but this will do nicely. Tony gonna fetch. Already getting basically Oh, actually not opting for the uh, the planes. Must maybe have a white source in hand, but does have the two blue now for Battle of Wits. Caustic helping with the, the shuffling a little bit. Both players I think a little concerned about going to time. Our matches are 45 minutes. Might get a portent. And a Battle Woods deck is definitely not immune <laughs> to the challenges of time. Alright, gonna rearrange like so. And pass. Oh. oh, first Innocent Blood. <laughs> yes, that's just the uh, blue-black land that enters. Tapped. Draw on upkeep. Ooh, and that's a good play. Ms. Merrick Fiend probably going to be grabbing the Funeral Charm that Tony just drew. However, Tony is able to engineer plague for what would you name? <laughs> Probably nightmare. What is the uh, the card types for this Mirror Fiend? It's nightmare or something. Of course, you have to go to Oracle because all these card types have changed in the great creature type update of whenever that happened. One of the uh, the struggles. <laughs> <laughs> a play in the pre-modern format where creature types potentially could matter is uh, you do have to go off of Oracle text. Yeah, another reason why a potential pre-modern master set would go over really well. It's actually just going to grab the engineer plague. Interesting. Okay. I guess saying if you really want to waste your funeral charm, kill on the fiend, you can. Looks like that is what's going to happen. Notably, Tony does have a propaganda in hand, so dying to creatures, maybe not super likely. And Tony's just going to say go. He is notably holding up counterspell mana, if he has it. There are a number of counterspells in the deck. All right, Priest of Gex coming down. Does it resolve? It does. All right, so we're going to hit a Phyrexian Rager. Lose a life. Draw a card. And pass. All right, so no action from Tony in the end step. Is going to make his last land drop. And this is where you just windmill slam the Battle of Wits. 
top decked it after the hand hate. I don't think it's happening though. Instead, I think we're gonna be propaganding. Propagating? Prop of something. Anyways, pay two for each attacking creature. This is what's gonna be happening. Definitely in the main deck for the more aggressive matchups, but it is gonna put in some work here for sure. Now, of course, Cossack does not need to attack to win, but he does need to have the perfect setup in hand to do that. And I don't think he does, because I feel like we would have seen a Jet Medallion last turn. All right, he does have another Mesmeric Fiend. While I'm coming down. Tap two for the fiend. Looks like we got a deep analysis, Lotnam's legacy, and the engineer plague is gonna go under. And to swing in with the Gix. Go ahead. Now, do you hard cast the deep analysis here? Probably. You're really just trying to find battle wits, obviously. I mean, that is the main goal of the deck. You've put down your one little bit of uh, deterrent. No white mana, which is relevant, as most of the removal spells are either black or, or white. Um, does did draw a blue card. Obviously not battle wits because <laughs> it would have been played but still thinking about it I do think you go for the draw spell here set yourself up for next turn yes you do potentially open yourself up to more hand tape but should be worth it you don't really have much in the way of answers right now. And you're at a high enough life total that you can take a couple of hits, including flashing back the deep analysis. Yeah, I think the most mana efficient play is for sure to uh, deep analysis. Draw some cards. And then next turn, you can flash it back if you don't have a good enough answer and still hold mana for other things. Because Caustic is not going to be comboing off this turn. He needs a bit too much mana for that to happen. And has a bit too few cards for that to be a potential threat. Especially if he's paying for propaganda. Tony is taking four each turn. But that's all. Oh, and I think we're actually in turns now. Okay, yes. This is what I was concerned about with this deck, is that it can definitely go to turns very easily. And Tony basically needs to rip a Battle of Wits in the next few turns or lose the game. All right, got a lot of Nom's Legacy. Ooh, big camera bump. Spectators, I think, crowding around the table now. Maybe not being so careful of the equipment. <laughs> the camera's not connected to the table, by the way. That was somebody bumping a, uh, a boom arm, basically. Okay, Felwar Stone. Doing a lot of ramping. Not much else. The uh, the Merchant Scroll. That's two mana, right? Okay. Five. 
Yeah. Interesting why he didn't cast the Merchant Scroll looking for the Enlightened Tutor. Because you could then Enlightened Tutor in your upkeep, draw the Battle Wits, and then win, right? Well, he, actually, he doesn't have white mana, so he couldn't do that. My bad. Okay, so that white mana maybe being the the main reason why this isn't happening. Latinon's Legacy again. I think... I think this is going to end in a, in a draw. I don't think Costa can win. In the one turn he has left. I don't think Tony can either. Unless he can uh, find a white source. It does not look like that happened. Costco was playing lands down. He's gonna have to come up with a lot of damage. Only has five on the board right now. He needs to come up with four more. And to get that five in, he has to pay six mana to do it. He does have a Gix. That doesn't really help though, that mana will disappear before he has a chance to use it with propaganda. I think this is just, yeah, if Utility swing out, take five, you'd be dead next turn concede. <laughs> All right, and Tony, that is not a battle of wits. And I think that's just going to end in a draw. All right, maybe not the result either player was hoping for, but good play from both. Both players got to do the thing and at least take down a game. So all in all, not a bad result. Thank you to everyone for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. We got a ton of more pre-modern videos in the works. Two whole months more of content by the time this one goes live, I believe. I think we just recorded last month's tournament. <laughs> so I got my work cut out for me. If you guys have been liking the content and you've been liking, sharing, commenting, all that stuff, subscribing, of course, and you want to do more to help the channel, there is a Patreon link in the video description. That money goes towards gear upgrades for the channel, travel expenses, all that good stuff and yeah I just really appreciate it thank you to everyone for watching again and I'll see you next time